It's your brother, Larry Adinekon, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God. So powered by the Pastor Larry Adinekon Center for Exaspiration, the PLACE. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on the reason why fine Christians suffer, coming from Job chapter 1, 1 to 12. A word of prayer together and right after we jump into it. Father God, we give you praise, give you glory and honor, Lord. Thank you for bringing us to yet another weekend and we trust you are going to cause you to roll just fine in the name of Jesus Christ. As we share your word together with your people, we ask oh God that your spirit will enable empower um, promote it in every oh God that your people will benefit maximally thank you father God in Jesus his holy name we pray amen hallelujah so welcome to job <clears throat> again one of those books in which we are not going to um, do everything line by line chapter by chapter line by line we are just going to do maybe some initial aspects and then later just pick uh, cherry pick here and there for your sake hallelujah so job 1 1 to 12 today now there was a man in the land of Oz whose name was job and that man was blameless and upright and one who feared god and shunned evil and seven sons and three daughters were born to him also his possessions were seven thousand sheep three thousand camels five hundred yoke of oxen five hundred female donkeys and very large household so that this man was the greatest of all the peoples of the east and his sons would go and feast in their houses each one on his appointed day and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them so it was when the days of feasting the pardon had run their course job would send and sanctify them yeah. sanctify them and will rise early in the morning and offer burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sins and cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From when have you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God, shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hand, his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely cause you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all he has is in your power, only do not lay your hand upon his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. All right, so you go back to uh, verse 1. Uh, this man was so described, um, and I said to myself, Wow, what is CV? <laughs> you know, when you read all the things that the Bible says he was blameless, he was upright, the same man was very wealthy, um, you know, all the, the things they, they, they used to, um, their value, their values, the thing they used to assess wealth and all that, you know, in those days. So he had all those things and he was so very uh, beautiful. He was also right, such a CV. He had quite an impressive CV. <laughs> Praise God. Now, <clears throat> so the first thing I see here to talk about us, well, maybe you want to encourage somebody also that it's good for you to build a CV, at least, but at least make, your, make sure your own is in the presence of the Lord by the grace and power of the Lord and uh, as a Christian, fine. So, his sons will go and feast in their houses, each on his appointed day, they will drink, they will have a fantastic time, you know, and then right after, Job will send to sanctify them, he will rise early in the morning, offer bond trophies according to their number, in case they have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And Job did this regularly. Now, to me, Job did not do well in this regard. Um, he wasn't sure whether these uh, young people, they, whether they have um, cursed God, that was the way they looked at it at that time, or whether they had done something wrong, but he would make sacrifices on their behalf to ensure that God was not angry with them, <laughs> you know, and uh, that, you know, in that way his children were kept, 
Let's put it in the favor of God, in God's book, good books and all that. I said he didn't do well. Why? You want to compare with what the Bible says about Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, 18 and 19, where God says, I know Abraham because he will teach his household, you know, to, to obey, obey me and to follow after his own examples. Yeah, that's the way it ought to be. Because you see, what it means is that he didn't really train his children to follow after his own example, the way he followed the Lord, the way he worshipped the Lord, the way he served the Lord. He really didn't trim them that way. And so he was the one that had to take responsibility, um, making sure that the necessary sacrifices were done to cover these young people. No, it was wrong. It's important for us to train our children in the way of the Lord. When they are grown, they will not depart from it. It's important to do what Abraham did. In that he trained his household after him so that they also would um, be people who love God and obey God and um, obey him uh, out of their volition, depth, from the depths of their hearts and things like that. So Job never really, do, you know, he never did that. Rather, he was covering for them in that he was making sacrifices on their behalf just in case. Just in case you don't arise, when you have trained your children properly in the way of the Lord, just you should expect that they would uh, naturally follow after your example and follow the Lord and things like that. So in that area, uh, Job didn't really do uh, perfectly well. So that's it. Now, so the Bible says there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. Let's talk about these sons of God. <clears throat> this was talking about the angels of God. You will remember that um, a phrase like this came up sometime in Genesis. Um, is this? I don't know whether. Okay, let me try. And we were explaining and saying that it was just a description for the angels of God. I think it must be Genesis 6. Yeah, yeah, it's six to Genesis six to, to when the sons of God saw the daughters of men, you know, something like that. So it was just describing the angels of God. It says Satan also came among them, and the Lord said to Satan, "From whence have you come?" Now um, we want to remember that um, Satan is what we call a fallen angel. So he came among them. Now Satan's Satan actually is a description. Satan means an accuser, an opposer, um, a falter. Um, so a resister, somebody, somebody that resists you, accuses you, opposes you, uh, look, finds fault about you, um, challenges you, and all that. That's just you know what the one they call Satan, and that's a description for this devil. So he also came among them, and and then the Lord said to him, "From whence have you come?" So he answered the Lord and said, "Exactly where he came from." So. Um, when the Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren and things like that, you know that it's a description. It's, that's what Satan means, okay? But let's go on, because I think I've seen something like this on the on, on the social media, where somebody was trying to make a big deal out of the, you know, some little, little information like this, and, you know, they'll make a big title and then make create a big deal out of it. So the Lord said to him, from whence have you come? In other words, it's not as if he, he goes regularly. But maybe they, they see him from time to time there. So the Lord said, where have you come from? He says, I've been going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. Um, well, that is his own way of operating. And he went on to describe that with God. And at times I like to uh, use uh, some name that my uh, beloved late mother would say. So it's a larica, you know, somebody walking up and down the place. <laughs> Sorry, that's just my own um, um language and dialect hallelujah so the lord now said to him said to satan have you considered my servant job that there is uh, nobody like him on the earth blameless and upright one who fears god and shuns evil and all that and then satan answered the lord and did what he would normally do now the first thing i you know see in this verse 8 is that it was the lord who flaunted you know let's put it that way fronted job before uh satan and then he made me to ask myself, oh, does God flaunt us like this? Um, it's very fine children. It's children that have a good CV before him. Does he flaunt us like this before, before Satan? You know, I, I, I don't have any good uh, basis from the Bible, like um, what the Bible says, the witness of two or three scriptures. I don't have that, you know, uh, to back what I just said up. But you see, this story of Job is interesting. It was like... Uh, um, God was the one who brought up Satan. I mean, he fronted him before Satan. And it makes me ask myself, 
Just don't flaunt us like this because it will answer, it will explain some things. It will answer some questions. It will, you know, it will answer why some people who are really fine Christians wonder how did all these things just happen to me all of a sudden. If in, indeed God does that, it could very well answer some questions. Praise the Lord. So Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him? And all the things he said, you know, look, what I see here is that this Satan was a brilliant, he's a brilliant person. He really, he really uh, responded to God. If you look at all the things he wrote here, uh, he, he, he made a very, very strong pitch, <laughs> you know, and it makes me think that this guy is really, really intelligent, and uh, it explains again some of the things that Satan does, you know, uh, you know, to, to Christians, and he does the way he operates, and it's obviously a very intelligent person, some very, very intelligent angel. The way he answered God here, oh. Uh, you think he fears you for nothing. Have you not made an edge around you? And, you know, and all those things. Very beautiful uh, counterclaim that he made. And one just gave it to him <laughs> that this guy you know, is very, very intelligent. But you see, uh, that was not all there is to it. And then he now said, stretch out your hand and touch all he has and he will surely curse you to your face. That way, that kind of language shows you that... Uh, and some of the things we believe ab about how it all happened, that Satan fell, you know, um, and was cast out of heaven and things we read in Ezekiel as well as in the book of Revelation. Those things, this kind of statement proved those things to be true. For somebody to talk to God this way, it means that person uh, has some, you know, good dimension of rudeness, you know, and, and, and um, failure to give respect to whom respect is due and all that for him to, to have spoken this way. So those are the things we read in Revelation as well as Ezekiel about how Satan got cast out of heaven. That must be, it must be really, really true because he was rude. And the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power, but just don't, don't touch his person. And then Satan went out. In other words, look, all this property of, of, of his, they actually within your reach all this while, but you didn't see it. Well, you know, it was within his reach for, because of technical spirituality, technical spiritual reasons, you know, and, but he didn't see all that. And the Lord says, oh, it's all in your hands actually, but just don't go beyond, don't go beyond that. And that would be it, because that's what you said. If I remove all those things, you said it will cost me to, okay, go and, go and remove all, let's see whether it's going to cost me to my face, you know, and that the Lord grants him permission for that. And then we now ask ourselves a question. Does Satan still go to the presence of God that way these days? I have a feeling that he still does because you see, in the book of Revelation, the Bible refers to him as the accuser of the brethren. Revelation 12, 10 or something. Accuser of the brethren. Before whom does he accuse us? If indeed he doesn't show up in the, in the presence of God among the angels, you know, like he did with Job, if he no longer does that, okay, when God now calls him, when the Bible calls him, make a pardon, the accuser of the brethren, before whom does he accuse, accuse us? So I think he still shows up, you know. Even now, just as we see in this story, and that answers some questions. If it still shows up like that, it means that when he gets to the presence of God, he will accuse some people, accuse some people, call them names, and challenge God to do this or challenge God to do that. That probably leads to some of the reasons why some of us, some fine Christians, go through issues and go through really difficult times, you know, at times. And you wonder, ah, this guy is such a fine Christian. What's going on here? Because everybody thinks everything always comes from God. This shows us that not everything come from God. There are certain things. God allows, God permits it. But you see, it's the devil that brings those things about. I think it's okay. That's why we read up to. We should just close it here and wish you a fantastic weekend. God bless you.